with an organization? Yes, I'm uh, the chair of uh, the German organization, IGED. And that is? Interessengemeinschaft e Dampfen e.V. Okay. We started out as uh, vape, a vaping organization, consumers, pure consumers organization, no industry contacts, uh, influence. Contacts, of course, we are consumers, we buy from the industry. Why is it so important to make that distinction? Yeah, because tobacco control always uh, tries to put uh, people in the industrial corner. Con uh, for example, uh, we even were on a page from uh, some uh, organization uh, like uh, the Tobacco Tactics in Germany as mentioned as uh, industry. So you're consumers? Yes, we are consumers, pure consumers. And, but you get tagged by uh, tobacco control as yes. being industry shills? Yes. We get tagged as industry shills. And it makes no sense, but for them, ob obviously, it makes sense. Well, I mean, isn't that character assassination in a way? Yes, of course. When we. Uh, when I threatened a lawsuit, uh, they removed us from their page. But uh, they didn't think twice before putting us on it. Because we had contact with the uh, German Ministry of uh, Agriculture and, uh, and stuff, uh, and they simply assumed we were industry because we had contact with the uh, ministry. How frustrating is that for you? Very, very frustrating. Why? Because we are not industry. We have our own agenda. We are consumers and we want to be heard as consumers. And. Uh, they don't recognize us as, us as people. We aren't people for them. We are some, uh, well, objects to be uh, ruled over. Objects to be ruled over. Yes, not even subjects. You know, I got to tell you, from what my understanding of history, I mean, tobacco control really got its start in Germany. Yes, I'm afraid it does. And it was at a bad, bad time, the black years of Germany. And uh, Fritz Lickind was one of the uh, first to coin the passive rauchen, passive smoke idea without uh, any science behind himself. But, well, it was cobbled up by his mentor and uh, his mentor was also a stout anti-smoker. But back then, they couldn't, uh, they had other things to worry about, and uh, they put the anti-smoking agenda a bit on the back burner. Mm. What do you think of the WHO and FCTC and the COP9 that's coming up? Well, the problem is, the WHO is a lot, and the WHO is not the FCTC. The FCTC is a special subdivision. Many people don't make the distinction, but I think we should. I think the distinction is important because the, the uh, tobacco control lobby doesn't make any distinctions between tobacco. Like smoking uh, is something totally different from vaping or smokeless tobacco. But they all put it in the same basket and we shouldn't do it. We should really see the distinction, the differences between WHO in general and they used to do a really good job when they uh, could uh, put uh, for, uh, their minds to it, like uh, 
on uh, contagious diseases and it's important but now the focus has, has shifted to the uh, non-communicable diseases like tobacco which they put all under one umbrella and don't differentiate. Paint a picture for our North American audience about what vaping is like in Germany. Was there a big uptake and now been slammed down? Or, you know, did it take off there in the first place? It was a slow uptake. It was only mouth-to-mouth -mouth propaganda. People got interested. I think uh, the most uh, interest was generated uh, when the important anti-smoking uh, expert started warning against uh, vaping. Just like uh, they do with the uh, kids in the US today, there were warnings against vaping, totally uh, absurd. We have no clue what, uh, what's in there, what, what is happening, but they are dangerous. Uh, even uh, with old folks like me, 50 years old, that created curiosity. So I got curious and looked up the internet, what's about it, and then I started experimenting myself. And that's how I got to vaping and many others too. Is there a lot of uh, people that are in your, you know, supporters of your organization? Well, we got a few members, some members, but uh, at the moment the activity is a bit low. It's, lo it's rather slow and people are complacent. They see the vape shops, they think, okay, everything's okay, we don't need to act anymore. The TBD has settled. Unfortunately, most vapors are wrong. Because the first hit they'll receive is... <coughs> is a ban. <laughs> no, not yeah. a ban. Not a real ban, but a tax. Right. Starting, it's, it's already in the law, it starts in July. Mm. And then it will be uh, 18, uh, no, 16 uh, cents per milliliter, rising up to 32 cents per milliliter in uh, two uh, 2026. And that is uh, uh, even topped with 90% uh, VAT. And uh, then we'll have uh, the absurd case that one liter of pure Petri base that you can now buy for about uh, 10 euros, maybe 20 if you are unlucky, will cost an additional 380 euros taxes. 380 euros extra? Extra taxes. And uh, while this tax won't affect uh, pot systems with uh, closed pots and small uh, volumes, won't affect them too, uh, won't affect them much as the pots itself are rather expensive compared to the volume. But uh, for vapors who use uh, who mix their own uh, stuff or who use shake and vape and other uh, methods for cost, cost reduction, they will be hit hardest. And in effect, this will make vaping more expensive than smoking.